morning. We are group Gamma Point Five. I'm Amira, this is Emma, Ian, Braden, and Jiho. And our project is Project Rose. Some of us are wearing prototypes. And this is a device that is aimed at treating mental illnesses such as anxiety, depression, and many others. And the way this does it is through emitting different frequencies, waves, and sounds through an earpiece, which um, we're working on wearables and implants because some may be more efficient than the other. And um, it uses nanotechnology to sense what the user is feeling and how they're feeling. So once this is detected, the device comes up with a response, and the response is the sounds, waves, and frequencies. And the reason we thought that this is um, very related to today's world is because of these statistics, which are quite staggering. And a huge percentage of um, teenagers have been diagnosed with anxiety. And the Google searches for anxiety have increased by 60 points in the past 10 years. And around the world, one in 12 adults will have be uh, diagnosed with depression or clinical depression. And yeah, it's quite um, a problem. And because of this, the use of antidepressants and many other drugs are becoming more common and those side effects are just awful. And we did um, a survey within our SciArt group and the questions were based on um, um, the diagnosis of depression and these results showed that about 80% of the people in our SciArt group showed signs of depression, which was quite... <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite interesting. And this just shows that depression isn't just in the one single form of sadness and just being antisocial. It shows that there's many different forms that it can be diagnosed in. And now on a more lighter note, how our product works. Um, so in order to create our design and the technology behind it, we had to look at other innovative um, technology which is happening today. So the first thing that we researched were Fitbits. Um, and more specifically, their Pure Pulse technology, which they use photoplethysmography in order to measure um, heart rate. And what they do is um, blood has this special ability to absorb green light. So if you ever look at a Fitbit, there's a flashing green light on the back. And it basically just flashes green light onto your skin. And then um, dependent on your blood flow, the density changes as your heart beats. And then it'll reflect a certain amount of light back. And that kind of helps you measure your heart rate. So we were looking into using that in ours. We also just kind of looked at AirPods and just in general listening devices and how they work is just by pushing sound waves through the air which are then picked up and amplified by your eardrum and then into your hair cells, the little hair cells in your inner ear. Um, and then we also looked at cochlear implants which are implants which help people who are deaf or hard of hearing to hear and they use these things called electrodes which I will talk about now. Um, but our biggest inspiration was this device called the Muse Headband, which one of our instructors pointed out to us. Um, and basically what it does is it sorts brain waves. And for those of you who don't know, brain waves are the synchronized electrical activity of neurons. Um, and so what the Muse Headband does is it sorts them into like five nifty categories and it amplifies and analyzes your brain waves um, by using these things called electrodes, which are also used in cochlear implants. And we have our little categories over here. And we thought it was kind of perfect that the most heightened type of brainwave is the gamma brainwave, since we're gamma 0.5. And it's activated when you're doing active learning and problem solving. So I'd like to think we had a lot of gamma brainwaves while we were working on our project. So yeah. Hello. So for our project proposal, uh, we plan to create like an implant or a wearable, depending on the user's preference that uses the heart rate detection through photoplethysmography and brainwave analysis through electrodes to detect when a user is overly anxious or stressed. Uh, it then emits specific sound wave vibrations into the ear and it stimulates nerves in the brain which will help calm the user. Uh, and we plan to have it customizable uh, and analyzed through applications on smartphones or through a device accessory. Um, so one of the one of the main functions of our devices is uh, noise filtration. Um, noise filtration is basically um, a function that is able to filter out noises that are discomforting for 
individuals suffering with mental uh, depression, uh, anxiety, and such. Um, and it's basically um, black it blocks out the frequencies that are discomforting for the individual, um, so that the inv individual in their daily lives they're able to uh, only have sounds that are comforting, and through that they can have sound therapy, uh, so that they're able to heal uh, depression over time. And yeah. So we made a little bit of a promo for our product. And so the song that you're going to hear in it was made by Amira. And what it uses, we discovered that there are certain sounds that correlate to calmness and induce the. So, so the, it's mainly alpha waves that induce call or like super learning. So. <laughs> Yeah, we use those sounds in a song that we made. It's two seconds. <laughs> yeah, just push record. Don't go down. Let's not shake it too much. So for the impact of our project, we mainly wanted to address three main topics, and the first was human comfort. So there, um, with an increase in industrialization, there's been a lot of increase in noise pollution, and noise pollution causes a lot of problems for humans, like um, tinnitus, hypertension, and vasculoconstriction. Um, so with the use of a rose, we hope that it will eliminate ambient noises that cause these uh, problems. And then the second is an increase in work efficiency. So through our research, we found that alpha waves are the wave frequencies that your brain emits in order to like increase learning. So if we can induce alpha waves, um, your brain can enter a, a, a state called super learning. So super learning is essentially being able to read faster and comprehend better. So you can, uh, so it will probably increase work or learning in schools and work environments. And then the third was the decreased use of pharmaceutical uh, drugs. Uh, so currently, the only kind of cure to depressants or to depression and anxiety are antidepressants, and they have a lot of negative effects. So with the rose, we hope that it will eliminate the need to use any antidepressants and things like that. So in conclusion, we believe that the use of sound therapy can be a viable replacement for other medical uh, treatments uh, because they can have very detrimental side effects. Uh, music and sound have the ability to affect different brain waves and affect emotions and mood. With this device, we hope to improve the lives of those with stress and anxiety disorders and uh, through comforting sounds. 
And when people are in a comfortable state, uh, they will be able to perform at a higher level with a greater efficiency. OK, so these are some of the um, more of a reflection, uh, reflection questions we came up with. Um, first one is, is it safe? So we always put safety first. And um, you know, in the past, throughout history, a lot of artificial products, like they were, uh, some of them were harmful to the human body. And we always like consider if this device will be uh, not only affecting like our brain and like depression, but other parts of our body too. Um, so if this actually becomes like into reality, we are going to uh, probably have to test before releasing to the really releasing this product to the public. Um, second, uh, second question was how much will it cost? Um, we're all very aware that not a lot of people or not everyone can afford like this sort of device around the world. Even like the Fitbits we researched there around 100 bucks, which is quite a lot for some people around the world. And um, we were, th uh, or I was thinking of turning this product into like a government product so that the government may be able to pay for like those who are uh, not as privileged or something like that. But that's also something we have to consider and figure out uh, before rele releasing this pro product to the public. And our last question was, is this product and our music actually accurate and does it actually work? Um, so through our research, uh, it is theoretically possible. And it's theor theoretically like it works. Um, but there were a lot of things in RC where it was theor theoretically possible, but not actually in real life. So before releasing this product, we really need to have an experiment of uh, a group of people with di diagnosed with anxiety, depression, such. And also a group, uh, a control group with people who are not. And we need to have, a product, uh, have this product in use and see if it actually works. Um, and those were the questions we came up with. And these are just our references. <laughs> <laughs>